Greetings. Welcome to Wix Online meeting number seven. We're getting closer and closer to the end of October, which of course is exciting because tomorrow Visual Studio 2013 is released to those with MSDN subscriptions, which means we can start making progress on those things. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into the agenda, which is a very short agenda. Um, we have nothing beyond questions and comments. Um, I wanted to go through and take a look at the pull requests because there are a couple that are interesting and open um, before we then go into triage. So does while I bring that up, if anybody has questions or comments in the... Um, oh, and Jacob just joined us. All right, well, Jacob, I, I pushed the burn self-update thing to next week due to our timing and given the audio and all that kind of stuff. Why don't we do that? next week. Um, we almost got close. So on that front, I'm going to bring up the pull requests. Um, this modularization thing caught my eye because we had a whole bunch of conversations in here. And then, Bob, you pointed out that existing code that works would break. Um, and all this says that in 3x, we probably don't want to do that kind of breaking stuff. So I was wondering, should this pull request be declined, or should it be sent somewhere else? Uh, and I see the blur is also not on. Um, yeah, I the the change as I read the change, it would essentially break. Um, it would break possibly quite a bit uh, because, as we know, there are many poorly authored merge modules out there, most of which come from Microsoft. Mm. And, but not exclusively. Uh, there are some other uh, known bad ones. Uh, Crystal Reports, I think, is is pretty pretty bad. Um, and there are some things. Well, like I said, the root cause is MSI doesn't enforce the restrictions that you put in your in your column definitions. So people, you know, rightly or wrongly, mostly wrongly went ahead and, and used whatever they, they wanted or needed. Um, so th potentially, there'd be a lot of things that break. So uh, I, I think in general, it's probably not the, the thing for Wix to do. Um, certainly not in 3x, because it would, it would break our compatibility promise. But um, it, I think the conversation is interesting, and you know, perhaps we're looking at, you know, like a, a link time pedantic mode, where yeah. <laughs> we enforce that. Um, so yeah, I think this particular pull request, the the actual changes should be declined, but the conversation should continue. All right, so we should move that then to like Wix devs and go from there. Yeah. All right, that sounds great. Um, so then the other thing I want to point out is that this pull request, I have lost my mouse cursor. Wow. It disappears. Oh, oh man. Weird. I'm going to have to close this and open it again. Anyway, uh, there. <laughs> I can't see the mouse when it does that. Uh, this pull request is about taking Visual Studio 2013 SDK. Um, I just wanted to point it out that we will be taking this change. Bob actually sent it, but we'll be taking it. My hope is this weekend. Um, once I get the Visual Studio 2013 uh, RTM download and all that kind of good stuff, so uh, it is actually just coming. available. It's available today. Oh, really? It's available now. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, then maybe I will get around to it to tomorrow, um, and hopefully, maybe even Monday's build will come out and we'll have like the bulk of 2013 stuff done. Yeah. So, anyway, just wanted to send that out, let people know that we are actually making progress on that, and because I've lost. That. We'll go back to that. So during that conversation, anybody have anything else they want to cover? I think next week we'll have that discussion about burn self-update um, and all that kind of good stuff. Um, unless Jacob, oh Jacob, it, it looks like you have audio now. Do you want to just kind of have a quick conversation about it and see where we get in a few minutes? If you're ready for that. Jacob, yes, maybe? Here, I'll unmute you and see if that helps. Jacob, do you have audio? Can you hear me? Yes, we All can. Right. So uh, I, I guess what I'm struggling with is, is trying to isolate my changes such that they're uh, not 
so tightly coupled into the engine? Yeah, that's a good thing because we don't want to add lots of functionality to the engine unless we're certain everybody wants it the same way kind of thing. Right, but I would really like to utilize the existing download functionality, you know, the, the retry, yeah. everything that exists in the engine I'd like to use, but in order to do so, there are so many parameters that are just internal to the engine that I don't know how you expose the functionality without exposing the innards of the engine. Right, so let's let's use this time kind of to come up with a list of things to go figure out. One is it sounds like interested in maybe reusing the download portion of the engine to acquire the update information, right? The, mm -hmm. the update file, all right? So that's one thing. Um, one of the things that I brought up that I don't know what we got to in the end was the uh, concept of how do you detect that a bundle, <clears throat> excuse me, is present on a machine? Um, mm -hmm and that kind of stuff. We don't currently document any way to find a bundle, and we did that actually purposely because we weren't sure. Um, like, we wanted the ability to be able to move all the metadata that we had around. Um, however, at this point in time, I think it's pretty safe to say that the uninstall key, basically mm -hmm. ARP registration, is going to be the database of bundles. Um, right at this point. So you were talking about using the provider key and stuff like that. I don't think that's what we want to do because the provider key has a lot of other subtleties that go along with it. So I think we need to discuss the appropriate ways to detect bundles either by their bundle ID, which we don't actually expose in ways that are generally useful in a lot of cases, again, because we didn't want people using it, and then also probably by upgrade code and stuff like that, the other ways that you detect. Mm -hmm. um, MSIs, but because we already have detect related bundles and that's operating off of those uh, bundle upgrade codes and things like that, it seems like we're going to have to be able to, we should be able to expose that as a API, as a, you know, here is how you would find all the bundles on the machine, which we've not documented today. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a second thing along with the download engine. The third thing was you, you were using the Atom feed and stuff like that, which was basically the same thing that clicked through did before, and it looked like, I just took a quick peek at your code, that you were doing it very similar to click through, except you were fixing some bugs in the atom parsing and stuff like that, which is all good. Um, is that is that part of the standard BA that looks for an atom feed, or where did that live? Because there's a lot of people that have differing opinions about what their update um, um I believe it was be. Dutil contains a, the atom parsing logic. Yeah, but it, it just gives you a, you know, a bunch of structs that you then have to go interpret mm. as something. So that wasn't in the engine, right? That was in the BA that was interpreting that? Or is that Un in... Unfortunately, in my implementation, I had it inside of detect that if if uh, on the uh, callback for... Oh, fudge here. Let me look real quick. I remember the right callback. Basically, if you return OK from a callback from uh, detect update, or it's the detect update callback, instead of detect when it calls the BA and asks for it uh, on detect update begin. Mm -hmm. If that returned OK, then I is where I was doing the download and the atom parsing. Right, right. Which is actually kind of the way that code was set up, sort of. And in 3.7, we stopped at that point, just before the point that you implemented, and kind of mm -hmm. went, well, let's see what people actually want. And then we got kind of what we expected was a mishmash of different things that people wanted um, different ways they wanted to represent their update data. Some people wanted something as simple as an INI file. Some people wanted the atom feed. Um, all those different kinds of things, which right. turns around back to the you know how configurable do you make this stuff, which was why we then did put it in the engine. Um, I mean that's why if I could do the downloads and whatnot from a, uh, a BAF. Mm -hmm. Then from there, uh, you could basically we could set up three different or multiple different uh, BAF uh, demo projects where they could choose which which type of download they they wanted. Yep. As far as whether it was I and I or do some Voodoo, do partial downloads, and try to look at the PE format and look at different things inside yep. of that. Or yep. Which is actually a, that was one that we talked about before too was the being able to read the the burn engine up on the web and. You just point at the new burn engine, it would be able to pull the version information out of it and all that kind of stuff. 
Right. Which but is, your concern there is you don't want to do a full download. You want to try to do a partial download. Like, exactly. Wait, you only need the PE header to do most of the information you need, I think, because um, it's all encoded in there in Burn. Um, okay. Um, hey, I just got email telling me that Visual Studio 2013 is now available. I did um, too. <laughs> mass mailing has occurred. <laughs> uh, that's cool. Um, all right. So, you know, I think... These are all good things to pull out. I think getting the burn download engine would be an int or exposing an API to the burn download engine might be interesting, um, or it would be interesting since mm -hmm. it does do so much heavy lifting and it would do these problems well, solve these problems well. Um, we've we've talked about that before, kind of exposing bits of burn as an API. Yeah. Uh, and we could even do that as the the locator, right? Where where is my bundle? Where's my cached bundle? Stuff like that. Oh, yeah, that's kind of interesting as well. I suppose I hadn't thought of it that way. Of the cache no, bundle, kind of like like deputal as well. Yeah. You know, that's code we use inside Burn, but also expose for other people to consume. Yeah, it, it's. I, I know what Jacob is saying though. The the download engine is kind of twisty right now, um, yeah, and thus twisted inside burn. So it's probably an interesting ex uh, thing to extract it out of the depths of the engine. Right. So do we need? Yeah, that's an interesting point, Jacob. What if it, the engine? What if the download engine wasn't in burn, but if it was in dutil? I'm not quite certain how to respond to that one. Uh, <laughs> so, so what we do, we've actually talked about this on various other things, um, is pulling functionality out of burn, low-level functionality out of burn that's not specific to burn. For example, uh, one of the things that I've looked at pulling out um, just to make life honestly easier and slightly more unit testable and stuff like that is... Um, like the whole variable subsystem. The variable system doesn't care about burn at all. It's it's basically variables.cpp and variables.h, and it doesn't need anything else in burn mostly. So it'd be a matter of pulling that, like you take that out and you put it in dutil, and now it ends up just being this function you can call to do your variable system. Um, and so it would be possible, I mean, it should be possible for us to do the same thing to the download engine and pull it out into dutil and then rework the burn code to use dutil as, you know, the download engine and, you know, wire it back into burn in the appropriate places, which then means as dutil, it's in a lib that can be consumed in your BA uh, function DLL and you could use essentially the same code that's in burn. The downside is the code is duplicated. Um, the upside is that the engine did not have to create an interface between the standard BA or between the BA and any BA functions or whatever and maintain that relationship going forward. Uh, would that be sufficient then? Because essentially you just want the download, the robust download functionality and right. burn does it or not is kind of irrelevant. Right. But right now you're requiring the, uh, the UX to be passed to these download functions. Oh, there'd be work. It, it would take some work to abstract the burn specific bits out. But, you know, in the end, it yeah. ends up as a simple callback. Right, yeah. So basically, all those things that is the that would be the, you know, the BA being passed in would turn into just raw callbacks. And burn would implement those callbacks when it used this new function in dutil as callbacks to the BA. Anybody else would use those callbacks as, well, however they want to report those errors um, or whatever they do. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm not suggesting that, you know, why don't you go and rip the download engine out and put it into util? I'm, it's more of a, because that, that is non-trivial. I totally appreciate that. I'm, I'm more asking, does that make, would that work for you if you, maybe, is if you had the download engine available as a library of functions instead of a thing deep inside the engine? I think it would, but I'm trying to remember if there, I mean, I didn't go deep enough into that functionality to figure out if there was some state data or something in there that burn was initializing that would be required. Yep, that would be good to know. All right, so how about we, we 
at this point because we're closing on 20 let 20 minutes let's let's um why don't we take those things as the stuff to discuss next as separate items knowing that the goal is self update but that we can then go kind of work on these things in parallel one is the I'll let you start these threads so that we can all respond to them uh, one is the how to detect burn um, on the machine two is how to get the the download functionality and then there is still an open questions about I think about the BA functionality and how much it could do or should do or where, where the self update should live if it lived in the BA functions or whatever right mm -hmm. Does that sound yeah. good? All right, cool. So if you could start threads, and and just for reference, I prefer narrow targeted threads rather than highly forked email threads in general. In fact, I am very happy if someone goes, cool, this thread has now turned into three things. Let's stop this, recap them, and then start again on separate threads and email. I find that it tends to make email communications clearer, especially on these long technical stuff. Yeah. Um, as long as you do a good job summarizing where we were at on the previous thread so we don't lose the, the history there. But sometimes the history just gets too convoluted and confused. People end up cross-talking and stuff. So um, mm -hmm. I think let's start those three things, and this is actually pretty cool. Now, on, at the same time, you have some fixes like the atom util and stuff like that to you know handle RFC uh, dates and mm -hmm. things like that. Pull those out separately and send them as small change requests just by themselves. I mean, that general kind of improvement stuff is just good to send by itself. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be tied in with a bigger feature necessarily. If you can go, look, Adam, you know, the Adam processing should handle these date formats. Here's the fix for that. We'll be like, awesome. Yeah. Right. And plus, that's a much easier code review to take. <laughs> <laughs> Not that right. Uh, cool? Yeah. All right, cool. Um, any other questions, comments, things that have come up? No? Going, going? Gone. All right. We will, that was fun. We'll move on to uh, triage next. So we'll see you guys there.